Hi, this is Seema, and I'm back with a new lesson on understanding spoken English. Well, a lot of you who are learning to speak English, you always have a problem with understanding English that is spoken to you, right? Well, you're not alone because when we learn or study English, you know, we learn to read English, we learn to write English, but understanding or listening to spoken English is something that is not really done in a very good way, which is why we always end up not speaking English very well, right? Well, I know it can be quite frustrating, quite embarrassing when someone tells you something and you don't understand, right? So we are going to first understand as to why understanding English is so difficult. Okay, the first reason why understanding English is difficult is because pronounced English is not equal to written English. Well, what does that mean? What I'm trying to say is that the way you pronounce some words is not the same when writing the words. So this is very uh, often in letters which are silent letters in a word. So you have a word, uh, for example, say laugh. Well, the pronunciation is a laugh, almost like a laugh, L-A-F. But when you write the word, obviously the G-H is silent right so if you are not used to listening or you know listening to too much English then you'll have a problem because pronounced English is not equal to written English okay now the other reason why understanding is so so difficult is because the same letter can be pronounced differently in different words what do I mean by that we have a letter E right we all know the letter e in a word like egg the e is pronounced as an eh the eh sound and in a word like the eat well it becomes a long e sound so well the same letter e but in one word it is an eh and in the other word it is a e that's quite confusing right Okay, the other reason why you're finding it so difficult to understand is because of unclear pronunciation. Now, a lot of students who I teach tell me that when they hear native people or native speakers talking to them, they find the pronunciation quite unclear. They don't understand it. Why? Because native speakers have a way of joining words together. So... The joining of words is done. So you have a sentence like, Do you want to come? But a native English speaker would say, Do you want to come? Do you want to come? Do you want to come is the actual way of saying it. If you are breaking every sentence, every word and pronouncing it separately. But when you are a native speaker, you tend to speak very fast. And therefore, you kind of join words together. You say, do you want to come? Are you going to have lunch? Are you going to have lunch? What are you doing? What are you doing? What you're doing? Okay, so when you are a native speaker, you join words together, making it very difficult for beginners to understand what you're saying right and the last but very important reason why you can't understand english is because you're not listening enough there is not enough listening of english going on in your in your studies right when you're studying english now uh when you were a baby for example okay you first learned you first heard words right your mother told you things you listened to what your mother said and then you kind of made out as to what the words were 
and then you started speaking writing and reading right so you first listened you got the words then you started speaking then you read and you wrote right so that's the order of learning things you first listen you then speak you then read and write but the problem is when we are studying English we try to read and write first and that's just not the way you can do it right so when your mother as a, as a child she tells you pick up the ball sweetheart she's saying pick up the ball now as a baby you don't know the words p-i-c-k as far as their spelling goes you don't know how b-a-l-l is spelt either but you hear your mother and then you kind of say the same words over and over again because of what you've listened to, right? So therefore, it is very important, just like babies, that even we, when we are learning a new language, we first listen to a lot of English before we even attempt to speak, read or write, okay? Now, I'm going to tell you what you need to do to start understanding English in a much better way. This is going to really help you. Okay, now the first very important uh, rule or what you really need to do to improve your understanding of spoken English is to practice listening daily. Now, I know all of you are very, very busy people and you really can't take out too much of time to do this probably, but all you need is just 15 minutes in a day. Just 15 minutes, yeah? And in 15 minutes, you can practice listening, but you've got to do that regularly, which means you've got to do that daily. Now, what would you listen to? Or where would you listen to? If you are a busy person, you can, you know, buy one of our CDs. Okay, we've got, uh, you know, a daily video vocabulary, which is there in the link, okay, at the end of this video. Uh, you can listen to that. If you have, a, you can also buy one of our CDs, uh, related to spoken English, which will also have dialogues. So it is very important, very imperative that you practice listening to English daily. Maybe while you're doing your household chores, while you are traveling by bus, train, metro, when you are in the gym, you know, just walking or jogging. Try listening to English as much as possible for you to, you know, kind of get the base in understanding the spoken English, yeah? And uh, now the second and most important part is practicing the right way. So yes, you do have to practice listening daily, but what does it mean to practice the right way? So if there is a right way to practice, then obviously there is a wrong way to practice. Have you been practicing the wrong way? Well, what is the wrong way? Uh, the wrong way is basically, you know, I, I play a CD, I just listen to something, I try my hardest to listen to something and understand it and I don't understand it so I just give up. Well, that's the wrong way of doing it because you've given up and you've not set realistic expectations for yourself, right? So there is a right way to understand English, okay? The right way is before you even start listening or before you even practice listening, you know have the right mindset okay so it's basically important to have the right mindset or have a positive mindset now don't be too hard on yourself understand that it might take you a while to understand or learn some words and it might take you a while to apply them when you are forming a sentence, right? So set realistic expectations for yourself even before you launch into the practice of listening the right way or, you know, learning to listen the right way. Now, when you have a topic, okay, suppose you have a paragraph, a small story about, say, you know, any topic for that matter, the first thing you will do is listen to the general topic. So when, when there is a story, okay, the story contains a topic, it contains details about a particular topic and it talks about everything in detail, the story in detail. But you don't need to know the detail at the beginning. So the first time you listen, so it's important to read three times maybe, okay, when you are listening, listen three times. The first time you, you listen, 
okay you are going to focus on the general topic what is the story all about just the general the gist of, of the of the of the topic really okay then you will listen to specific details all right so you have a story about a crow who is really thirsty and he is in search of water he finds a jar okay which has pebbles in it but that jar is only half filled with water now the poor crow well he does not have a beak long enough to reach the water because it's half filled right so what he does is he goes and collects more pebbles and puts them in the jar have you heard that story until the water comes up and he can drink now if you are reading that kind of a story initially you are going to get the normal gist of the topic which is a crow being thirsty and looking for water okay what is the specific details now the specific details relate to what is mentioned in the paragraph okay it can talk about you know what what part of the country or you know what is the weather like is it a sunny day is it is it, is it a rainy day uh, is it a cold day details could also imply things like you know is is the crow uh, you know like uh, just all alone there are there people around little specific details about the story that's where you will give your focus to when you read or listen for the second time and the last one is the third one is now when you are reading for the third time the same paragraph or listening to it for the third time you are going to pay attention to individual words now this is the time wherein you are going to mark or you know keep a mental note of individual words and see how they are formed in a sentence okay when you keep doing that every day every single day for 15 minutes at least you will see that you will eventually you are going to be in a position to apply your words in a sentence and form grammatically correct sentences because now you have heard enough and because you've heard enough you can respond to spoken english because now you can understand spoken english well that's it from me on this lesson on understanding spoken english well you take very good care of yourself i'll be back with some more lessons until then this is me saying